Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 16th of December, and we're in the third week of Advent. In the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Unworthy servants that we are, O Lord, grieved by the guilt of our deeds, we pray that you may gladden us by the saving advent of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 54. Shout for joy, you barren women who bore no children. Break into cries of joy and gladness, you who were never in labour. For the sons of the forsaken one are more in number than the sons of the wedded wife, says the Lord. Widen the space of your tent, stretch out your hangings freely, lengthen your ropes, make your pegs firm, for you will burst out to right and to left. Your race will take possession of the nations and people the abandoned cities. Do not be afraid, you will not be put to shame. Do not be dismayed, you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth and no longer remember the curse of your widowhood. For now your Creator will be your husband, his name the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer will be the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Yes. Like a forsaken wife distressed in spirit, the Lord calls you back. Does a man cast off the wife of his youth, says your God? I did forsake you for a brief moment, but with great love will I take you back. In excess of anger for a moment I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love I have taken pity on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. I am now as I was in the days of Noah when I swore that Noah's waters should never flood the world again. So now I swear concerning my anger with you and the threats I made against you. For the mountains may depart, the hills be shaken, but my love for you will never leave you, and my covenant of peace with you will never be shaken, says the Lord who take pity on you. The Word of the Lord. And the Gospel is the Gospel of Luke chapter 7. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to talk to the people about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swaying in the breeze? No? Then what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? Oh no, those who go out in for fine clothes and live luxuriously are to be found at court. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. He is the one of whom scripture says, See, I am going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare the way before you. I tell you, of all the children born of women, there is no one greater than John. Yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he is. All the people who heard him, and the tax collectors too, acknowledged God's plan by accepting baptism from John. But by refusing baptism from him, the Pharisees and the lawyers had thwarted what God had in mind for them. The Gospel of the Lord This passage from Isaiah brings together so many different themes of Old Testament and above all the descriptions of God. It brings together the initial love of God for the human race when he allows Noah and his family to escape being drowned along with the rest of the world when the flood comes. Brings up uh, the prophet Hosea, seeing uh, Israel as a wife that's unfaithful and how we will always accept her back. Brings up the idea of Israel, a married one, but for a while God has hidden his face brings together all the different themes of love, forgiveness, the covenant love of God for Israel, and then the promise that it will be the universal messenger, that it will take God's message to the corners of the world with all people uh, listening to it. The theme of universality. Um, can't find the exact phrase at the moment. Um, but the whole point is, it's the sign it's, Isaiah is putting forward this great vision of the God who will save, save us all. 
And Jesus in the Gospel takes this one forward, he's talking of John the Baptist and said, of all ordinary people, he's the greatest. But anybody who receives the kingdom of God, who has faith in Jesus as the Son of God, the new covenant, is greater than John. And we hear of all the people who are accepting the new uh, covenant, particularly mentions bad people, the tax collectors, who have turned to Jesus in hope and faith. And then he goes on to mention the people who have turned down God's invitation, um, the Pharisees and um, the scribes, and how they, they were the exact ones that God was hoping would follow when Jesus came to announce the good news, but they're the ones who have not listened. And so the warning is to us, don't take God for granted, prepare for his coming, and have faith, and trust that God will give us all that he promises. Not always easy in the present to see how, but this is where faith comes. God will, God's will will triumph. Son of man will reign forever, and we in the kingdom of God, with the beginnings of it, will, will find our place as God's children. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, be near us, Lord, today. Let the heavens open, let the skies rain down the just one. Let the earth bring forth Christ, who is the wisdom and power of God. Be near us, Lord, today. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us into your kingdom. May we enter in and live according to your call. Be near us, Lord, today. The world does not know you. Show yourself in our midst to all our brothers. Be near us, Lord, today. We thank you, Lord, for all that we have. Move us to give of our plenty to those who have little. Be near us, Lord, today. We look for your coming, Lord Jesus, when you knock. May we be found watching in prayer and rejoicing in praise. Be near us, Lord, today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. With sorrow, Lord, we confess our sins, unworthy servants that we are. Heal us and bring us joy by the coming of your only Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. All the best. Have a good day. Shines in darkness, morning star, which never sleeps.